This problem is 8.3, and we are asked to find the smallest required force F to move the car. And the car is so that they tell us that the brakes are on the, this will be, and this one here is free to roll. And they are inferring that this one here does not have any friction. So the first thing always is to find our free body diagram, right? So let's do, we draw our car over here. And so in the car we have the force that we are applying, F, that is unknown. And then they give us the position of the center of mass. And there goes the weight. And the weight is the mass times the gravity. And now, they are telling us, as I said, that the brakes are placed at will B. Therefore, we have a normal force at B and a normal force at A, but we only have friction force at B. Where does the friction go, the direction of the friction force? Since the system is still in equilibrium, is not moving, but the friction force will always go in the opposite direction of the tendency of motion. Therefore, it goes in this direction. This wheel is free to move and it doesn't contribute it to the friction force of the car. So the brakes are only in the rear wheel. Now that we have our free body diagram, we apply our equations of equilibrium, right? And then we will add forces in X. And for that, we need this angle. We have it right here. And then will be force F. So if we are using a coordinate system X, Y, where X positive goes to the right, then we have a negative F cosine of 30 plus the friction force equals to zero. Then we have our forces in Y, we have NA plus NB minus the weight plus the component of this force in the Y direction equals to C. So as you see here, we have four unknowns, but the two normals, the friction force and this force. However, they tell us we want to find the minimum force required to move the car. So since we have the minimum force, we will set up this to end pending motion. Therefore, it means that the force B will be equal to the force B maximum before I lose equilibrium. And that's equal to mu times NB. And that gives me one less equation because now let's unknown. Now these two are related. Then I have one unknown, two, and three. And I will have three equations of equilibrium. So my next equation then is taking moment respect to any point. I can take moment respect to point A. And that lead me. So here I have to be very careful with the dimensions, right? So I, will, I did not draw the dimensions in my free body diagram. I have the original diagram. And I'm taking moments in this point. As you see, both components of my force contribute to the moment. This is the Y component of my force, which is equals to F sine of theta, and this is the X component. So this is F Y, and this is F X. And the, the moment created by F Y respect to point A will be 0 0.5 negative. So let's start writing that. So that will be 0 0.75 times the y component. And the y component, I already said, that is the force sine of 30. Sine of 30, we know that is 1 half, but I will write it so like that still. And then we substitute. Then this x component, which is f cosine of 30, produce a moment. And the distance is 0 0.3. So it will be positive. 0 0.3 F cosine of 30. 
now I have the NB also produce moment at positive plus NB and the distance between NA and B is 2.5. So it will be 2.5 NB and then the moment produced by the weight is negative. Let me put it right here, negative. And the distance is to the center of mass, which is this point right here, which is this point right here, is one. So it will be negative one times the weight. And that's equals to zero. So as you see here, I have three unknowns, so I have to solve the system. And as I said, we will set up the uh, friction force equals to mu times nb. Let's name the equations, one, two, three. So we have three equations with three unknowns, which are na, nb, and F. Remember that F B is equals to mu times N B. So that re does not represent a new one. If we solve this system of three equations with three unknowns, we get that N A is equals to 10,263 newtons. N B is equal to 7,000 975 newtons, therefore I can calculate FB multiplying this number by 0.3 of course, so it's 2,393 newtons, and the force is equal to 2,762 newtons. So those are the results for this problem. Let me make it clear that those are results. So the minimum force that you need to overcome the friction at will be will be this force right here.